Hey everybody, I hope you're having an awesome day or an awesome evening wherever you are in the world. I want to start off by thanking everybody. We're at 19,300 subscribers and you guys don't know what that means to me. That is so awesome. Also, I want to remind everybody that you can become a member right here on YouTube for just 99 cents. Starting January 1st, 2023, the MVP, VIP, and Pro Levels will all disappear, and those perks will drop down to the 99 cent member. It is a great way to support the channel, and a great way to support the content you like. Now, having said that, I want to say thank you to my two newest members, Ash Rose and Paul Lushinsky. Thank you guys so much for believing in the content enough and believing in the channel enough that you wanted to support it by becoming a member. And also thank you to all the other members who have joined over the last month and those who have been with me since the beginning. Now, if you haven't seen any of my previous videos, the last four I've done have got quite a bit of information in them. I did a coverage of XTix Linux Deepin yesterday. And I also did Microsoft and the WSL and WSL2. What you need to watch out for those as Linux users, or if you're somebody wanting to try out Linux, to definitely stay away from that. The king of Arch Linux spin, zero Linux, and then of course, the best GNOME Linux distros of 2022. That's just my opinion on which distributions did the best job with GNOME. Now yesterday, on my XTix Linux video, it comes with the Deepin desktop environment. Now, Deepin OS has been kind of iffy in the Linux community for quite a while now. I do like the fact that a lot of people take the, the desktop environment and put it on top of other distributions, but it always comes back to the same thing. Deepin OS is Chinese. Deepin OS is Chinese. It's a security risk. It's this. It's that. It's always something that it's insecure or there's a problem with it. Now, about four years ago, a YouTuber named QuidsUp did a review on it. And yes, Deepin was taking some information. It was taking user information. And it was taking things from the App Store and things like that. But at the end of the day, it wasn't really anything compared to what, let's say, a Microsoft would take from you or even a Google. But because they were based in China, that's where the issue lied. The whole thing was, it's China, it's China, it's China. We don't know what they're doing. There's nothing we can do or say that will make it okay to use a distribution from China which I disagree with, guys. There's one thing that you can do. Deepin is open source. You can open the source code up and look and see exactly what the operating system is doing. But I still have people on the channel going, we don't know what it's doing. Yes, we do. Open it up. Take a look at the source code. That's the answer to everybody that puts that in my comment. We have an easy way to go in and find out what the operating system is doing. Now, Another one that I have had issues with in the past is Archman Linux. I've had people come out of the woodwork and say, this is a Turkish distro. I wouldn't trust it as far as I could throw it. You can't do this. You can't do that. And this is what gets me is I get complaints on these distributions, like people that are complaining about, let's say, Windows 10 or 11 or Mac or things like that. You know, if you go back and just take a look at Deepin, which is, of course, developed in China, People have a problem using that. People don't want to use Deepin because of its Chinese roots. Here's my question. How many of you all put your iPhone down so that you could get on your keyboard and bash me about Deepin being a Chinese distribution when 80% of that iPhone is made in China? That's where it's built. That's where it's made. But you want to come on here and get all up in my business about Deepin being Chinese. If you're worried about it, open it up and take a look at the source code. I'll raise my hand because I've looked at it. Have you? I'm going to venture out and say you haven't. Now back over to Archman Linux. This is a Turkish distribution. I've had people complain about it. I don't know if it's because it's from Turkey or if there's an issue with that. But really, at the end of the day, all you got to do is open it up. Take a look at it. You can find out if it's tracking you or not. Does it or does it not have an end-user license agreement? Archman doesn't. Have you opened up the source code to take a peek at it before you come into the comments and say, hey, they're tracking you or they're doing this? No, you haven't. I have. That's the point that I'm trying to make. That's the difference in everything that we talk about, whether it be coming from Turkey, whether it be coming from China, or whether you're looking at something like Astra Linux, which comes from Russia. Now, I do understand this. I have people that tell me they don't want to use Astra Linux because it's Russian and they want to stand by the Ukraine and not support anything from Russia. I can see this, but what we got to look at is Astra Linux is not made 
by the Russian government. The government doesn't produce it. So why would you have an issue with not supporting a developer in Russia? It doesn't mean that he has the same political beliefs that the state has. Just like here in the United States, there are plenty of people that watch my channel and there are plenty of people that don't watch my channel that don't agree with what the government does. But we get lumped in. Everybody gets lumped into one thing. If there's somebody overseas, I'm from the United States, I could easily look over and say, China, China's just like their government. But the people in China aren't all like their government. They're just people that get up every day doing the same thing we do, just getting by, going to work, wanting to take care of their families, and just being people. So my question is, is why do we lump all those people into what their governments are doing? Why do we have to do that? We don't have to do that. We already know what the governments are doing. We already know that they're tracking everything that we do because this man right here told us they were. And not only did he tell us they were, he provided plenty of evidence that they were, not just the United States. We're talking about governments all around the world that are monitoring everything that we do, collecting all this data, putting it all together and trying to, you know, have us all in this nice little search engine so they can keep us all grouped together and know exactly who's connected to who and what they're doing. But what does this have to do with a simple open source operating system? Because everybody wants to take every developer on every Linux distro and try to attach them to what the governments of the country they might live in political beliefs are. And that's not fair. Because I do know this. I have friends all around this world. The main producer of this channel is from Croatia. I have spoken to people from Russia, from Germany, from the United States, from Brazil. I can keep going on and on. I have friends all over the world. Tech Zero in Lebanon. We all get along in this community. We all have the same beliefs. We all have the same goal. We want an open source operating system that gives us privacy and lets us move forward. If you think a distribution or a Linux operating system is tracking you, it's real easy to check. You just don't go into the comments and say because it's from this country, it's tracking you. You go in and you look at it. You look at the source code. You do your investigation. And then you come back and say, hey, I found this line of code right here in this distribution. Proves my point as opposed to just coming into a comment section of a video, waving a big fear flag and saying, this is this, this is that. Every distribution that I use, I don't look at the source code. I don't have to. But if there are some questions about certain distributions, I can open that source code up and look at it at any time I want. The funny part about this is, is that Deepin gets slammed because it is made in China. But we don't slam Ubuntu enough. That thing calls home more than Windows does sometimes, it seems. But, of course, because Ubuntu is partnered up with Windows now, there's a lot more of that in the Ubuntu ecosystem. If you disagree with me, I'm sure you'll put it in the comments below. But at the end of the day, just tell yourself this. Just because a government is one way doesn't mean its people are the same. Love each other. Us in the Linux community have each other to support. Us in the Linux community have each other to help. That's what we're here for. Before you raise a flag and saying something is a certain way, make sure you get into that source code, take a look around, and come back with evidence, just like Edward Snowden did. If you disagree or agree with anything that I've said in this video, please drop that in the comments below. Please do me a favor before you leave today. Please like, subscribe, or follow my channel. The more likes I get keeps me in YouTube's algorithm, which means the information you just saw in this video if it was helpful to you, it can be helpful to somebody else. And subscribe. Doesn't cost anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, we are on three separate platforms. YouTube, Utreon, and Odyssey. And you can become members on all three. On YouTube, it's only $0.99. Cents. On Utreon, it's $2.99. And on Odyssey, it's $4. You can also buy us a cup of coffee. Maybe go over to PayPal and throw us a donation, or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.